Hi, this is David from over at Simply Maya. Now, as I'm currently stuck in the house, I thought I'd walk you guys through a texture creation process. So we're going to start with a photographic reference from the Simply Maya texturing library. And I'm going to bring this into Photoshop and finally Substance Alchemist and then into Maya to create the entire texture. So first things first, let's have a look at it in Photoshop. Now, because I'm going for a tileable texture, I'm going to want a square. Um, this is generally easier if you're using a program like Substance Alchemist, uh, Bitmap to Material, X Normal, something like this. You're generally going to want to start with a square. So I'm just going to use the regular marquee tool here. I'm going to hit Shift and I'm going to drag a square box. And then I'm going to put this somewhere where I want my square. So somewhere like this. Then I'm going to go to Image, Crop. Now this is a fairly large texture. Uh, this was uploaded in 4K, actually slightly larger than 4K. So I can afford to chop a bit off. Now as I want it tileable, I also want to chop it here and here. Although I'm going to have to hold Shift again because I want that in a square box. Now I'm just going to try and match the pattern of the bricks up here and the pattern of the bricks down here. I have to be too accurate. We're going to take care of most of the tiling details in Alchemist. So I'm going to go to Image and Crop. And this will be the base for my texture. Now, as you can see, it's fairly high resolution, which is a good thing. You really don't want to be working on something that's sort of 600 by 600 pixels, um, not in this day and age. So I'm going to save this image out and I'm going to open it in Substance Alchemist. Okay, so I've saved my image out in Photoshop and I'm just going to drag it and drop in here. You can also click there to use the file browser. Now we're going to a bitmap to material, which actually used to be a standalone program, but has now been integrated into Alchemist. So I'm going to hit OK. And this is going to go ahead and create a displacement, a normal map, a roughness map for specular roughness, all of that kind of good stuff. And as you can see here, we've got it on the cylinder and it really doesn't look very good at all, but we will fix that. So first things first, if you want to see this on, let's say, different geometry, you need to come down to mesh. You can stick it on a cube, a plane, a sphere, whatever you want. Uh, cylinder, normally pretty good for this sort of thing. But again, your mileage may vary. Now, this is also coming tiled. Um, so if I click the tiling here, let's untile it a second and we can get a look at what it looks like. Still not excellent. So let's look at the 2D and 3D maps. So here we can see the diffuse, which should be just our image there. The normal map, it creates the specular map, which at the moment will be about 50% gray. Uh, we'll adjust this later. A glossness, a gloss map, which would be specular roughness. In the case of Maya, a height map, which would be displacement and ambient occlusion and opacity, which we have none because we have no transparency on this. And the scan, which is actually the raw image that we pulled in. So let's start by having a look at some of the options in bitmap to material. Now, we want a surface scale. This is definitely not 100 centimeters, uh, which would be about three or four feet. Let's make this, let's say, um, ooh, 300. Okay, and width scale, thickness of brick, about three centimeters. Should do us just fine. Now, we're going to look at some of the options here. So in order for you to see this better, I'm going to pop this onto a plane for a second. There we go. And that will allow us to see the displacement better. Let's just get rid of that. And for a start, it looks like we're the wrong way around. If I pop open the displacement here and up the amplitude, the light areas are pulling upwards. We don't want that. We want to invert that so the light areas push downwards. We've also got this wavy nastiness going on, which we really don't like. So I'm going to put the large down. Let's get rid of some of that. Uh, small details, we don't want that many. And medium, maybe like so. Now, the displacement is way, way, way too high. I'm going to put it down to 0.12, which I believe is somewhat the default in um, in Alchemist. Now, we do have one other problem. This is determining its values based upon the color of our bricks, which is why when we inverted it, our mortar is white, so it went down. But these bricks here are also a different color. They're also a much lighter color than norm. So if I go like this, you'll see that there's big holes where these bricks are because they're light. 
Now, there are ways to fix that within Alchemist. Uh, you could use an equalizer, try and equalize the light level across it. But this, mm, it's not excellent. Um, it's going to leave you with a rather washed out looking texture. So we can go back to Photoshop and correct that before we start. Now, don't worry, once you save this from Photoshop, if you save it with the same file name, you can update an Alchemist so you don't have to do everything again. And I'm going to come up to here and I'm going to use the patch tool to patch out these much, much lighter colored bricks. Also, it looks like the I took this photograph, by the way, uh, it's wall near my house and it looks like it's been repaired over the years and they haven't really given that much care to it. They've just bunged in a couple of modern bricks amongst all of the older ones. So let's fix that. Uh, let's do somebody else's job for them. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to click this off a background layer and I'm just going to select the brick that I want to patch out. That's probably a bit too much. And I'm at home at the moment, so I have no tablet plugged in right now. So I'm just doing this with a mouse. If you've got a tablet, you might enjoy a bit more success and you might want to take a bit more time with it. Now I'm going to move this up somewhere where I can get sort of a brick I like. There we go. Something like that should do it. And we're good. Now that's a bit light. Let's put a layer over the top here and come in, just grab a paintbrush, darken, and let's just damp this whole thing down a bit. There we go. Zoom out. Okay. Not perfect, but a lot better than an off color brick. And as I say, you might really want to consider taking a bit more time with this. I just don't want to bore the pants off everyone. And as I say, no tablet at the moment, kind of basic system I am working with here. Oops, there we go, on the right layer, uh, just because of, well, I think we all know why. Um, <laughs> but let's dampen this down a bit. There we go. And I'm just going to go through and do these bricks wherever I find them. You can just skip forward a little bit on the video, should you like. Um, Again, this is uh, pretty simple stuff, really. So let's come up and get this one. That looks good enough. Done. And a couple more. Whoops. Use the right tool for the job. And I'm actually updating the texture library over at Simply Maya right now. Um, there's another video that should be on our YouTube channel by the time you see this. Uh, letting you know how you can also come in and add your own textures to the library. There's a number of reasons to do so, all of which I cover in the video. But the basics are we allow the uploading of very high resolution TIFFs. We don't change your image. There's no advertising on it. Uh, we make no money from it at all. And you can throw on your own PayPal should you want to, if you would like to accept donations. And people can also collaborate with your textures should you allow them. So if you upload photographic reference, somebody can come in and do what I'm doing here. Whole bunch of reasons why I believe that system was good. It's been something of a labor of love of mine for quite some time. So check out that video. I will link it obviously in the description. Um, there you go. That's probably enough self promotion for now. Let's just finish this off. One more brick, I think. And this is not the most interesting job in Christendom, but you can almost get into a sort of Zen like state when you're doing this sort of thing. Um, really not that bad. Having been forced to do my fair share of rotoscoping over the years, uh, that is much worse than this, I can assure you. OK, actually, that's looking pretty half decent. Yeah, yuck. I really don't like this guy up here. So, I mean, there are uh, a number of videos on YouTube already about creating textures, of course, that's with substance um, and they're very, very good ones, too. I'm not going to knock them. I'm just going to say, though, that a lot of them don't show quite the minutia. They start off with images that have already been fairly optimized for creating a texture. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. I can understand why people don't want to waste their time showing this on camera. I'm just going to show the full kit and caboodle because right now I, uh, well, as I say, I am stuck in the house. 
without much else to do. Right, there we go. So that's much more of a flat texture. Let's just save it. So I'm saving as a TIFF. Um, oops, I'm actually going to save that without the layers, uh, just so it's smaller. Uh, as I say, I'm saving it as a TIFF. Uh, it doesn't matter what you save it as for Alchemist, really, realistically speaking. Uh, there we go. So there's some I prepared earlier. Let's discard the layers. OK. And when that's saved, I should be able to just pop it open in Alchemist. So if I just hit reload here, you should see these bricks disappear. There you go. And so you do. And now I don't have any giant holes in my mesh there. So I can turn this down probably about 0.12, which again, I believe is the default. And now I want to look at the 2D maps. So I'm going to look at height here and I want to really exaggerate this one. I'm actually going to redraw this one in Photoshop um, for a displacement map. I don't want all the tiny details. I will use the normal map for tiny details for displacement. I just want kind of um, large details. So I'm going to come in. I am going to add an adjustment layer, which will allow me to adjust all of these layers with a bit more control. I'm going to come up to height. And let's see if we can tweak this a little bit. So I'm trying to just show the black gap between the bricks here. And there we go. So sometimes this is easy. Sometimes it is not so easy, of course. There we go. That could just about do us. Now you might have to spend quite a significant time playing about with this. And sometimes it's even necessary to go into Photoshop and paint over the top of it, but sometimes not so much. Let's look at the 2D, 3D view. And actually, in this case, I think we could probably get away with... Um, let's just make this a bit bigger with not taking that into Photoshop because the displacement is actually displacing bricks without all of the small details that I don't want. Now we can go back into bitmapped material here and play with this height too, just to get a bit more. There we go. You can see on this map that it's So we don't want too much of that. Maybe a little bit of small detail just to break that up. But again, I shall be relying on the normal map for most of the small detail. OK, so that's looking not too bad. Let me throw it on a cylinder so I can start to deal with the roughness and glossiness because it's a bit difficult to see across a plane. So let's throw it on a cylinder here. OK, and am I liking that? I am really not liking that. So let's go to 2D, 3D maps and we want glossiness. OK, and this really isn't uh, enough for me. So I'm actually going to use the adjustment here. So roughness, glossiness, contrast. There we go. Intensity. See, now you can see we got some glossiness on this, but that's probably a bit too much for brick. What we want is that nice contrast in this black area here. There's going to be no reflections. You see, if I turn it fully white, it's very, very reflective. Um, what I want is I don't want the mortar here to be reflective. I really just want sort of the edges of the brick to be reflective, somewhat like this. OK, that'll allow just the edges of the brick to catch the light. Now, this kind of thing can be adjusted in Maya too, but that seems all right for me. Let me look at the ambient occlusion map and not liking that much. Recompute AO from height and that should give me a better ambient occlusion map there. So I just want a bit of occlusion to put a bit of dirt in that. If you see here, no occlusion, a little bit of occlusion in between the gaps. 
Okay, that's looking okay. Now let's make it tileable. Now this is where a lot of the problems often come in uh, when you're making a text tileable. Now this one's not bad. It's got one seam in it down here, but other than that, if we put on the tiling here, let's go one and two, and you know, it's not terrible. Uh, if it was for background, you could just about get away with it, but let's not have something we can just about get away with. Let's have something we can actually get away with. So let's stick in a layer and let's try and equalize, uh, just to equalize the light across this that will help with the tiling. There we go, and that's equalized it. Now, if I turn that on and off, you will see what it's done. It takes a moment for it to compute. Um, and basically, if I look at the 2D here, diffuse, just tries to equalize the light level across the whole thing. So now you can see it's a bit more patchy. And when I put the equalizer back on, it's a bit more uh, continuous luminance value or, um, you know, it has a, it has a, a bit more of a uh, uh, consistent consistent was the word I was looking for sorry consistent luminance value uh, so there we go now as for tiling let's come in and add let's see we can add a tile node here tiling there we go and this should help us out with tiling the thing okay so we get to decide where to tile from so I'm going to obviously tile from one of the rows in between the brick here and I'm going to pull this down and tile between another one. And actually, that's looking pretty. There's a slight seam here. Let's see if we can see that. Yeah, slight seam here. Let's go into edge and lower the threshold a bit. And you'll see that's just blurring it together just a tiny bit. Depending on which way you want to do it, you can have a larger or smaller threshold. But let me have a look at this. OK, I'm going to say you can get away with that. Now, you can play with some blur here, uh, probably a bit of smoothness too. Uh, but for a wall texture, I'm going to say you can get away with this one. What on earth has happened here? Why have you done that? That must have been my mistake there. OK, so let's have a look. Yeah, done. I'm going to put the tiling up to two so we can see it when it's really, really tiled. Yep. Obviously, you've got some repeats in here. That, that's one of the downsides of a tileable material. I'll be perfectly frank. I wouldn't normally use a tileable material except anything other than a starting point, really. Um, generally, if I wanted to texture a hero wall, I would texture the wall all with one photographic reference that I painted myself. A tileable texture often gives you a good starting point for creating other textures, though, so they are very useful things. Let's bung this back in 3D. Looking pretty decent there, tileable. Uh, and let's throw down the tiling on here to one and one so we can get a better look at this. Now, am I happy with the amount of displacement? Again, that will be changed in Maya, not really in this software. So what is up with our displacement? Displacement is so much easier to see in this program when you stick it on a plane. And as you can see, we've got rows of bricks there. Okay, the only thing I'm not sure about is the reflectivity. So let's uh, blah 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 blah. blah, blah. Uh, let's go into our adjustment layer and look at the brightness and glossiness. And let's bump up the 2D map for gloss. And I think I want a bit more glossiness than that. So. Yeah, now I can see it, little glossy edges in here. OK, let's get this texture out of here and into Maya, because this is the bit that I find a lot of people leave off the uh, the Substance Designer tutorials. They, there's a good reason for it that makes them non-specific, because obviously the textures that come out of Substance Designer, or in this case, Substance Alchemist, can be used for anything you want. Uh, but we're a Maya-specific site, so I'm going to go Maya-specific. Now, 
if you want to export them some other way, you know, please do. If you're a Maya guy, stick with me and I'll show you how to export them from here, get them into Maya and how to link them up to an Arnold standard surface material. Let's go to export current view. Now there is at the moment a Arnold 5 preset, which we want. And for me, I don't need the emission. Uh, there is no emissive material. I don't need metalness. We're not dealing with the metal and no, no opacity because there's no opacity in this image. So I'm just going to call this wall and I'm going to give it a place to upload in this handy folder I've got called wall and then I'm going to export that. Now you will notice when I export that there was actually no room here for ambient occlusion. That's because it's not normally included in an Arnold material. However, I want it. Um, so I'm going to come down here and go default and that will let me pick whatever I want. And in this case, what I want is ambient occlusion. So export, uh, and that should just export that a a ambient occlusion to the same place. And we can use that once again in Maya. Now, that was basically it. Exporting is as simple as that. One of the things I will note, however, because uh, this one can really end up in a bit of a pickle. If you use the default project workflow and you export a normal map, it will actually export as DirectX, which means you'll have to flip the red channel, I believe, in Maya because Maya uses OpenGL and normal maps. If you actually select the preset of Arnold 5, it will export an OpenGL map uh, open jail normal map so you won't have to flip the channels a little bit confusing if you look in Maya here which I have a copy open I can show you uh, if we assign a new material to this sphere so I'm going to go to shader AI standard surface this has made that a bit bigger and I go into the material itself under geometry and then I add a bump map so just I'm just going to add a file. You'll see here under Arnold, you've got flip R, flip G. If you are processing a normal map, you'd want uh, tangent space normals for a start. But if you are processing a normal map that came out of Alchemist under the preset Arnold 5, you will need to uncheck flip G and flip R. If you are processing a normal map that came out of Alchemist under the preset uh, default project workflow, then you will need to leave flip G checked, I believe. Um, yeah, it is uh, uh, flip G. Okay, sorry about that. I just paused there for a second to make sure that it was flip G. In our case, we're going to be exporting under the Arnold preset, so we want both of these off. All right, now as to my Maya scene, it is basically a really simple scene. It's just a blank Maya scene with a floor plane, a sphere, and this HDRI image, which I picked up at HDRI Haven, which is hdrihaven.com. Uh, you can Google that one. Um, they do basically free HDRI maps, lots of them, excellent site, no affiliation with them, but highly recommended. They work only on donations, so go over there, give them a shout, um, and donate something to them if you use them a lot. Right, so we are basically now here, and we need to create a Arnold material with the maps that we just exported from Alchemist. So let's go to the node editor, and let's clean all this lot up. Now I'm going to create a new Arnold material. So I'm going to hit, why is my window so long? There we go. I'm going to hit AI standard uh, surface. That will be the material that I want. I'm going to give it a name, wall. There we go. And now I'm going to start adding things to it. So we won't need the shading group for right now. So I'm going to shove it up here. I'm going to add a file and file texture. Now 2D texture node is only relevant to us if we want to tile it, which we don't at the moment. So I'm going to select the file name and I'm going to come in here. I'm going to go in my wall folder and I'm going to select the base color. I am then going to hit tab and I'm going to get a file texture and I am going to select the ambient occlusion. So ambient occlusion, there we go. And as you can see, there is our occlusion image. Now these cases, these are both sRGB. So these are the only images we'll be importing as sRGB color space. All the rest will be raw. So let's take these and we need to blend them together. So AI normal, uh, AI, no, I want to multiply them together, don't I? 
there we go it helps if you can smell and i'm going to take the out color from both of these so out color and i'm going to plug it into this guy would you stop that there we go so out color plug into this guy and it's going to go into input one and then i'm going to take the ambient occlusion and plug it in to number two so out color whack there we go other i'm going to plug it into input two and then i'm going to plug this multiply node which is this multiplied over this into our base color here so out color there we go and into the base color here and we should see this now if we assign an existing material wall we should see that on the viewport if you do not you may have to hit six to get your viewport into shaded mode so uh let's see so that will do us for a start i'm just going to make this a bit bigger uh, so we can see it a bit better and i'm going to do that so when i come to render it later i can actually tell where my camera is there we go job as they say is a good one so that's the first thing now you do not have to use the ambient occlusion in fact in most cases i would say it was probably a bad idea uh, i just thought i'd hook it up here so you can see how if you don't want to use the ambient occlusion that's fine just remove the multiply node from the chain and stick this into base color after disconnecting the multiply so out color doing other uh, base color there you go and you don't have any ambient occlusion over it now i'll do a render both with and without ambient occlusion uh, multiplied over the base color so you guys can have a look uh, it's an interesting thing to see but that's how you do it if you want to use the ambient occlusion that comes out of alchemist all right now let's put some other nodes in here so we're going to need some sort of specular roughness so again file texture and let's load this one in and do -do 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 roughness there we go that's our roughness map open it up and this is quite important this needs to be a raw image because we don't want any color correction on it now maya will probably give you some gumph about uh, not having rules for png setup that's fine just ignore it color balance you want alpha is luminance because we were using the alpha of this not the color so alpha needs to be luminance now we're going to take this and we're going to shove it in here under specular roughness there we go and that gives us a specular roughness now our specular weight if we open alchemist here and go away and let's have a look would be this sort of color now i'm not going to bother to import a specular weight map in because it's much easier for me to have the control in Maya by just doing this. So I don't want that much specularity on this. This is a brick wall, not a shiny uh, coin or something. So that should just about take care of that. Now we need a normal map. So again, we're going to need a file. Um, file and texture. And what are you? roughness did i not just plug that in did i not ah i plugged the ambient occlusion in because i'm i have been sitting at home too long all right so ambient occlusion we changed by mistake but you know it's the same thing raw alpha is luminance uh for this which is indeed the roughness roughness there we go raw alpha is luminance and let's get that plugged back in sorry about that out alpha other and do, 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 specular roughness there we go now we've got this one which we're going to make the normal map so there's the normal map this one also needs to be raw alpha is luminance does not need to be checked um, on this one so let's just come in and take the out alpha now i can't plug it directly into this i'm going to need a bump map first so bump 2d let's come in here let's connect this to the bump 2d so let's do the out alpha into bump value and then we're going to take the out normal and we're going to plug it in to the Ooh, let me see here i've forgotten what you call it to so the normal camera there we go so out normal normal camera 
Okay, so this should just about set us up. Now hit L on the keyboard, by the way, and you'll organize all that up. We've got here our um, ambient occlusion, which we're not using right now. There's the multiply node for it. So, so far we've got a base color, we've got a roughness, and we have a bump, which should be set to raw. That should be set to bump. This should be set to tangent space normals under Arnold. Both of those should be turned off and we should be good to go. Let's get a small render here. So I'm just going to come in and render this. I've got fairly standard render settings here, so I'll be back in a moment when that renders out. Okay, so that finished its render out. Uh, I need to upgrade my equipment at home, so it should be quicker for you. Uh, but you can see our bump map is working here. We've got those points of specularity, but we're still looking quite flat. Now, we can use displacement to fix this, but before we do that, if we look at this, this is fairly low poly. Now, I could come in and smooth this guy, of course, to add more subdivisions, but I don't want to. Um, this is just going to be geometry heavy, and there's no need. If we look under the polysphere shape node here, come down to the subdivision tab, which should be under Arnold, and hit Cat Clark. Uh, there we go, and give it, say, five iterations. This will actually add subdivisions now at render time, so we don't have to have a massively uh, subdivided object knocking around, slowing down our viewport. Now, let's come in and add a displacement. For this, you're going to need to add it to the shading group. Uh, so let's go to the shading group itself, displacement material, file, and I am going to add our displacement image. So again, we just go into where we saved our textures. There we are, done. And we are going to go up to here. Now it's created a displacement shader node for us and a file texture node for us. It's done all of that. We need to make sure that this is in raw and that this alpha is luminance is checked. Now in Maya, um, Displacement with a value of white is uh, no displacement at all, and displacement with a value of black is maximum displacement. In fact, I'm going to open this up in Photoshop to give you a more of an idea, because I think a lot of people have big issues with displacement in Maya, because frankly, it's not implemented well. Um, so let me just open the displacement map here in Photoshop. Okay, so this is the displacement map that we saved from Alchemist in Photoshop, and I'm going to select this grey. Now, in um, Maya, as I say, white is no displacement and black is maximum displacement, which means there's no way to do a negative displacement. Uh, so what we can do is we can form Maya into doing a negative displacement by making uh, no displacement 50% grey. Now in order to achieve this, I want everything that has no displacement on it to be 50% grey. So I am going to actually come in and I am going to select here our black colour. And then I am going to do a select uh, colour range. And I'm going to select a quite a big fuzziness value there. And then I am going to, let's see, maybe that was too much of a fuzziness value. Yeah, I think it was. Uh, so let's come in. First, let's get this more, let's see, levels. Let's get the darker bits darker and the whiter bits whiter. There we go. So I want a very, very sort of black and white map right now. I don't really want any um, sort of shades on this. Now, this might be a bit too harsh for a displacement, so I might have to sort that out later. But this is basically what you want. So now we've got black with full displacement and white with no displacement. But if we did want negative displacement, we'd be stuffed. So I'm going to select both of these layers, hit Control e to merge them together. And now I am going to select this black here. And build art. so let's do a color range. There we go, that should be good. And I'm going to now fill the rest of this with 50% gray. So image, fill, 50% gray, done. 
Now, Maya will do the 50% grey when we fall into it as no displacement, black as maximum displacement, and white as inverted displacement. So if I wanted to, I could now create a three-segment uh, map. So white for inverted displacement, grey for normal, and black for maximum. All right, so this will do us. Um, I'm not going for perfection here, so this should be all right. Now, you could come in with a brush and kind of paint the outline of the bricks in a little bit more, but really, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to save this as my displacement image, and now I'm going to pop that one into my... So here we are back in Maya, and I'm going to just bung in a displacement. So I need the shading group, and I'm going to come into displacement material. I'm going to hit File, and I'm going to give it the file that we just... Uh, just just saved out of Photoshop so let's have a look there it is and displacement PNG there we go now because this is 50% gray this is going to have a very unusual effect on Maya as I mentioned let's do a smaller scale so 0.2 so we don't go too mad and I'm going to render this in place so you're going to actually see the size of this sphere expand outwards so let's render it in the viewport so I'm going to come up to Arnold I'm going to hit render I'm rendering on the GPU here so this might take a minute you can see what we're actually bigger than the square the whole thing has pumped outwards and if I go and make that even more obvious so let's do a scale of one you are going to see that this is going to be much much bigger than you think it is now this is not a good thing you do not want the displacement to change the overall scale of your object in most cases so let's figure out why that's happening now it's happening because 50% grey in Maya would be displaced outwards, but we want 50% grey to be normal, box standard, no displacement. So go into displacement shader, go to Arnold, and here in the scale, uh, scale R0 value, hit 0.5, um, and try that again. Now we should see this, uh, this should be negative 0.5, I believe, yet yeah, now it's much smaller, so that should indeed be negative 0.5. Okay, now you should see it rendering at the correct uh, size. And what have we done there? Let's just check this again. 0 0.5 negative, that should be okay there. It is of course not. Why not? Probably because the color space on my displacement is set to sRGB. That is something you definitely want to avoid. It needs to be raw. As I mentioned, most of the images would need to be raw. Let's try again. And we still have this. Okay, so Y is Y, Y, Y. Let's do that again. Okay, so not negative 0.5, just 0.5. My apologies. Okay, but as you can see, it's now staying in size. So we've created a displacement where 50% gray is no displacement, black is inwards displacement, and white would be outwards displacement. Um, Maya has always had some unusual bits and pieces with displacement. Now I'm going to turn off auto bump because there's no high frequency noise in our displacement map. And obviously our displacement is way, way, way too big. So let's scale that down to 0.1 and we should start to see a better amount of displacement. Even that's probably too big, 0 0.05. We don't want the bricks sticking, you know, 10 centimeters out the wall. Something like this would be absolutely fine. So we could now play around and add the ambient occlusion to this. Let's do that. Now I'm going to actually do a render off the GPU here, um, just for the sake of completeness. So I'm going to go back to the CPU. I'm going to do a render here and I will see you in a moment. So this is with displacement and this is without displacement. Now the camera was in a slightly different position, so you'll have to excuse that, but you can see the displacement here, you can see right through here. So it creates, you know, a much more displaced effect as you would imagine. Now, a couple of things with this, let's put the ambient occlusion back on it and let's also tile it because these bricks look massive. So we're not getting quite the effect that I want here. So we've got our ambient occlusion here. We should have a multiply node here. So I'm going to disconnect the base color. Let's find that. This is the base color. I'm going to disconnect that and I'm going to plug the out color from the base. So out color into the multiply. 
input one and I'm going to take the out color from the ambient occlusion and I'm going to plug that into input two of the multiply and then I'm going to take the out color of the multiply itself and plug that into the base color up here so I'm going to hit L so everything organizes itself and now I have some ambient occlusion so so you don't have to I will now render this and uh, show you the results So this is with ambient occlusion, this is without. So your mileage may vary on whether you want to use the ambient occlusion or not. You can also edit the AO in uh, Photoshop, of course, or not use it at all. Generally, I don't use it, but I just thought I'd show you guys that you can integrate it into your workflow should you want to. Now, I'm going to go to the node editor again because I want to tile this. This looks like massive bricks. You can barely see what it is we've created at the moment. So I'm going to take all the 2D texture nodes and I'm going to do a repeat U and V of two and two. This will tile it twice, of course. So just come in and make sure you get all the 2D texture nodes because you don't want to tile, say, the base texture and then forget to tile the uh, displacement or something because that will just look stunningly weird. And I'm going to render again and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so here's our final render with a normal level of displacement and an uh, a sort of exaggerated level of displacement, just because we can. Now, I hope this has been of some interest to you. Um, it's a little less polished than the stuff I normally put out. I just thought as I was going through my texture library over on Simply Maya and making some textures, I'd walk you guys through the process that I use with, in this case, Photoshop and Substance Alchemist. Um, now I'm going to actually upload this texture to Simply Maya and if you're interested in our texturing system how and why it works there'll be a video on our YouTube channel so again I hope that's been of interest to you and thanks very much for watching cheers